The Terminator 2 Judgment Day Jigsaw Puzzle. 500 pieces of summer blockbuster jigsaw fun. <laughs> Measuring 26 <laughs> inches by 40 inches. It was the same size as the... Of Hey guys, sorry I'm late. Man, that last episode we did on the Terminator's iconic shotgun sure was great, huh? We covered all sorts of stuff. The shotgun's amazing history dating back to the Old West. We talked about Lloyd, the bartender's grandpappy. We talked about John getting smacked upside the head by Arnie. We broke down the sound effects that were combined to create the Winchester's amazing sound in T2. We even demonstrated how the iconic flipcock maneuver works. And people loved it. We got all sorts of terrific feedback, didn't we? After all that, I just can't wait to get into today's topic. So let's just start rolling. By the way, what are we covering today, boys? You gotta be shitting me. Jigsaw puzzles. First invented in 1760 by map engraver John Spilsbury, the Okay. The Terminator 2 Judgment Day Jigsaw Puzzle. 500 pieces of summer blockbuster jigsaw fun. Measuring 26 inches by 40 inches, it was the same size as the official movie poster hanging in thousands of theaters across the country. Milton Bradley made other movie poster puzzles around this time too, like Jaws, Back to the Future 2, Ghostbusters 2, Batman Returns, Beetlejuice, Total Recall, and others. From what I can see, they made 17 of these from 1989 to 1992. The only one to come out after the T2 puzzle was one for Home Alone 2, another one of those rare examples of a sequel that does a pretty good job of living up to the original. The T2 puzzle was released in time for Christmas of 1991, when it retailed for $4.97. For more festive Terminator Christmassy goodness, go back and check out episode 5 of T for 2, where we looked at Letters to Santa Claus, written by little Terminator fans in the 80s and 90s. Do kids today even still like puzzles? I remember having a lot of fun with puzzles back when I was a kid. Some of the favorites in our house were uh, some Dr. Seuss puzzles and some Ninja Turtles puzzles. I didn't actually have this Terminator 2 puzzle though, so this is gonna be my first time putting this work of art together. So let's get to it. This is a pretty big puzzle, so I'm thinking we should just get right down on the floor so that we've got plenty of space to spread this out and do it right, you know? You know, I remember back when I was a kid. And I... Damn it! Danny! What did I tell you about all these damn cables? Oh shit! Sorry! Damn it. This might be more work than I thought. Say, uh, could you give me a hand with this? Look, I'm gonna put together this goddamn puzzle, and I order you to help me. After these messages, we'll be right back. No TV, no TV. What? No. Hello, I'm Pee Wee Herman. Talking Pee Wee is really cool, cool. He's naughty. I know you are, but what am I? Soon, <laughs> you'll be that way too. <laughs> Whatever you may do, it's so much fun when he's with you. Banana sandwich? Arr! You'll go wacko, you'll go crazy when Talking Pee Wee. Talking Pee Wee from Matchbox for you and your kid. Cherry sold separately. What's that? Major Lock. You watch any good movies lately? I saw that new Fast and the Furious movie. It's pretty cool. 
Those cars went really fast. And sure enough, the raccoons had gotten up on the deck again and made a damn mess of the trash cans again. And I had corn on the cob that night. And so believe me, they had those cobs strewn all over the damn place. And so I'm out there trying to clean this up before bed, right? And all of a sudden, I heard this kind of sound. And I looked up and I saw a UFO. I know it sounds like I'm making this up, but I'm being totally serious. I literally saw a flying saucer. Well, obviously you don't give a flying fuck. And of course people keep on telling me, oh, you need to move on, you need to let it go. But I don't know, I just, I just really miss her, man. Like, I still have a draft text message on my phone that I've been thinking about sending her, but at what point do you just let it go? It's not like she's been sending me anything. I think it's been, I don't know, eight years. <laughs> so then the lady's husband says, just ignore it. If you've seen one, you've seen them all. And the lady says, but honey, this one's eating my popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> I just miss her so damn much. She made the best hot dogs, man. Like, I don't know if this doesn't sound like that big of a deal, but like, they, they just had like a... So I said to the owner, if you think you're so damn tough, why don't you come take it from me? I mean, I didn't say that, but I thought it. She like, she like boiled them or something. They were just good. Damn it, this puzzle's taking forever. <sighs> and he hit the turnbuckle so damn hard, he didn't know whether to shit or wind his watch. <laughs> weeks, and I'm just so sick and tired of that guy bossing me around. <laughs> Almost half this puzzle is just solid black pieces. We're just guessing at this point. 500 pieces of summer blockbusters jigsaw fun. <laughs> Mail's here! Welcome to the very first edition of Mail Call. On Mail Call, we open up fun stuff sent in to the show from our wonderful viewers. But before we find out what's inside this little package that just arrived, we need to play a little catch up. Because you see, this isn't the first thing that was sent into the show. So we need to first show a little gratitude to all of the other terrific items that have been sent in over the past few seasons. The very first thing ever sent into the show way back in season one was this terrific print by our friend, the artist known as Lunatic. He's done some really cool digital paintings of characters and scenes from your favorite comic books and movies and TV shows. You can check out more of his work over at Art of Lunatic IG on Instagram. And I can't thank him enough for sending this into the show. I think I'll put it right here. Thanks, man. The next thing we got in the mail was this awesome sticker of a certain cybernetic infiltration unit sent to us by artist Pete Silva III, also known as Thunder Beast, which is where you can find him on Instagram. There you'll see tons of breathtaking tattoos, illustrations, coffee tables, and more. He's got all sorts of cool stuff to look at. I think I'll slap this right here. Thanks, Pete. Oh, and uh, he actually sent me two of these kick-ass stickers, so I'm giving this one away. Hit the subscribe button below and leave a comment answering this question. Anything else? And you'll be entered into a blind drawing. If you win, I'll send this to you anywhere in the world. 
And finally, one night after an evening of taco pizza and soda pop with my good pal Kurt and his wife Molly, Kurt graced me with this awesome hand-drawn charcoal portrait of my very first celebrity crush, the lovely Linda Hamilton as Sarah Connor, just as she's flipping old Dr. Silberman some shit right in front of the interns he's trying to impress. Good morning, Dr. Silberman. How's the knee? You can check out more of Kurt's work on Instagram at Old Curdy Bastard. <laughs> God damn it, I never get tired of that. There you can check out his tattoo work, cool stuff like painted saw blades, and fun illustrations like Danny DeFrito and Danny DeCito. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, where should we hang this? How about right here? Thanks, Kurt! All right, so now that we're all caught up, let's see what arrived today. This package comes to us from Gardens, England. Uh, this envelope looks pretty tough, though. I could really use something to open this with. I know! We'll use the official Terminator 2 Judgment Day Fighting Knife! So my buddy Michael from way over in England told me he'd be sending me this. It's a prop business card that he designed himself for the Tiki Motel, where Reese and Sarah spent the night after evading the Terminator and where they, uh, got down. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is really cool. Um, I, I just love stuff like this, and it only makes sense that something like this would come from Michael, because he is an I am not exaggerating. He is the biggest fan of the original Terminator film on the planet. If you don't believe me, you can go see for yourself by checking out at Terminator1984Fan on Instagram, where he's always posting fascinating trivia, behind the scenes stuff, and more about the original Terminator film, as well as photos of stuff from his incredible collection. Uh, it looks like he actually put his little logo on the back of this business card, which is a really cool touch. So now I have a business card for the Tiki Motel. Thanks again to all of you guys for sending in such cool stuff to the show. This is something that I never expected to happen when I started this stupid little project, so it really touches me. Right here. <laughs> anyway, that's all for today. Be sure to stick around for the next episode of Tea for Two, where we're finally going to cover a much requested topic Video games! That's right, we'll be covering Terminator 2 Judgment Day for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Anything else?